Hi dear friend, my name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership and I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey. So make a date with us and see you on the growth journey. that if you think you are leading and there is nobody following you, you are only going on a walk. On this platform, you are going to learn principles of leadership. You are going to encounter different leaders. You are going to learn about how you can grow as a leader, how you can make an impact. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the host for the leadership platform. I am a leadership coach, a lawyer by profession a John C. Maxwell certified coach. I have been in corporate life in senior positions for several years. And now I run the Center for Transformational Leadership where we train and coach leaders to become better leaders. And I invite you to go on a journey with us as we discuss the subject of leadership in the coming weeks. This and every Saturday, you have opportunity to ask questions, share your views on important leadership matters. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you are joining us. Today is another day or weekend that we bring to you the leadership platform and we are happy to have you with us. My name is Sarah Jesse Apia and I am going to be your host today uh, for the platform. As you know, we always ask you to put in the comments your name, wherever you are joining us from, and we'll love you to do so, so we can welcome you appropriately. If this is the first time you're joining us, we want to say a very, very great welcome to you, and we hope you will learn a lot from our speaker today, as well as from the contributions that all of you will be putting in the comments. We are streaming on Facebook as well as um, um, YouTube. So wherever you're joining us from, put in your name and we'll be sure to welcome you. Today, what we're going to talk about is the subject of questions. The subject that we have is the power of questions in leadership. And we have no other but our own normal host for the leadership platform, Samuel Eim, who is also the CEO of 
the Center for Transformation and Leadership uh, um, Africa. So, Sam, if, uh, before you get ready, I can see a few people who have joined us, so I'll take the time to welcome them. We have George Apabli, uh, senior, joining us all the way from Ho in the Volta region. Great to have you with us, sir. And we have Jemima Kumi, joining all the way from USA. So good afternoon to you, and great to have you back to learn with us. So please go ahead and put in your name wherever you're joining us from. I am joining you from Geneva. So good evening to me and then good evening to Mr. Aim. Mr. Aim, if you're ready for us, you can come on now and then we'll welcome our other viewers and participants as they sign up. Okay, I have Sedinam Akwele Foli from Tema. Great to have you, Sedina. So, Sam, over to you. Your audience are waiting for you to learn and to share their comments with you. So. Great, 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 Sarah. Thank you, as always, for, um, jo for joining and hosting us on the leadership platform. We appreciate your support all the way from Geneva. Thank you so much. We pray that God, God will strengthen you, give you strength so that you would continue to support us on the leadership platform. Uh, we want to thank everybody who is joining. It's seven o'clock and we are going to learn on the leadership platform. You are all very welcome and I can see people joining. As Sarah has said, if you are joining, um from wherever please introduce yourself so that we would appreciate you uh, and please um, just like our page on facebook share uh, this link uh, to your friends and colleagues because we're going to share very important nuggets that will help you help everybody every leader no matter who you are would benefit from the lessons and um if you are on youtube also please go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss um, our sessions. We're going to talk today about questions. And so we are going to ask so many questions. And so let me just uh, try to share my slide. And whilst I share, I want to inform you that the growth journey has begun. Um, we began with 12 great leaders 15 growth uh, great leaders um on on tuesday last uh, tuesday which is uh, the first of uh, february and uh, we have started great great learning great takeoff so um we are building up the next cohort um for the leadership platform also so for the growth journey so please uh join us and let's learn together all right so um sarah let me know if you can see my slide as i share it i can um, see it and it's very very clear you just have to um make and uh, put it in slideshow and then that will be great all right let me yeah. so while we're doing that, that yeah. Whilst, for yeah. one, you're doing, one second, I will yeah. do that immediately. Yeah. Whilst you're doing that, I'll take the opportunity to welcome Dominic Tiburu from Accra, uh, Collins Anal from Pram Pram, Xavier Ajovo from Insawam, Ghana, Joe Kunto joining from Abuja. Great to have you, sir. And James Chumesi appear, my namesake, joining all the way from Weja. Okay, so Sam, let us know whenever you are ready and you can take us away. Sarah, I'm ready and we can start. Great. Um, all right. So the power of questions, that's what we are going to look at this evening, the power of questions in leadership. 
Um, and I, as I prepare this and I look back on my life, I realize that I have been asking lots of questions in my life and I like asking questions. As a child, I like, I asked a lot of questions from wherever I was. And as I prepared this lesson and go, went through the material, read around, I noticed that I am where I am here partly because of the questions that I have been asking. Um, I didn't know that, I mean, I didn't know what I'm going to share today as a reason for asking questions. But somehow, uh, like all of us as children, we ask so many questions. And as we, we grow, somehow our knack for questions, our desire to ask questions, just wins. And so the question is, why do we stop asking questions? And how can we begin to ask questions? And what are some of the important questions we're going to ask? So in this presentation, I'm going to share with you um, why um, we don't ask questions. And we are going to ask also why should we be asking questions? What are the importance of asking questions? Then we are going to also go through some questions that we should be asking ourselves daily as leaders. Some questions we should be asking our team members as leaders so that we can make progress. It is evident that history shows that people who ask the right questions got the right answers, and actually development, change, transformation begins with asking the right question. And that's what Kubra Said says. Asking questions is the first way to begin change. I mean, I mean, as a country, as a continent, we had to fight for independence. And this started when people started asking questions. Why should we not be able to manage our own affairs? Why should the white man be the one ruling us? We, we, our leaders asked that question. And they started fighting. Because they got the answer that we should be able to do that ourselves. Colonialism was uh, the order of the day. Slavery was accepted. People asked the question, why should somebody, another human being, be enslaved to another human being? That question had to be asked and uh, change began. So asking questions is the first way to change. And in our lives, if we are not asking the right questions, the problem is that we are not going to have uh, the necessary change. As I said, children naturally ask questions. And a story is told of uh, this little child, like all of us who, were, who was asking questions, asking the mother questions. The mother will answer. She will ask another one. The mother will answer. Got to a point, the mother got so exhausted. So she had to just shout on the girl, you're asking too many questions. Don't you know that curiosity kills a cat? Stop asking questions. So the little child a bit intimidated, went to her corner and sat there quietly for a few minutes and just came back to her mother and asked mother, by the way, mother, what did the cat want to know? If they say curiosity kills a cat, what did the cat want to know? Children cannot stop asking questions. As a student, I ask questions and sometimes some of my colleagues were we're, we're just uh, appalled that I asked too many questions. But a teacher will never go out of the class if I have not understood the lesson. And by the way, because of that, by the time the lesson finished, I had understood it and I didn't have to do too much work anymore. I had a boss, and most of you know that I worked for Ecoman for several years. And my... One of the CEOs who work for who, who I work with in Ecoban, who has had so much influence on me, is called Arnold Ekwe. 
Now, in the beginning, it was a bit uncomfortable. You go to Arnold, and then you will present a case. And usually in the beginning, it was why we couldn't do so many things. So you went to Arnold and said, no, Arnold, you said we should do this, but it's not possible. Then he will sit like this, and he will say, why? Yeah, but we, it's, then we start to look for what, reasons why it's not possible. And as you begin to explain, he will just calmly ask, why? Again. And so he will ask you why, and you answer, and he will ask why, and you answer, and he will ask why. And ask, he ask why three, four, five times, it will dawn on you that you're probably not making sense. You probably need to recollect your thoughts and come back again. And with that kind of questioning, we were trained to challenge the status quo. And those of you who know EcoBank, EcoBank is, is, is a Pan-African bank, is cuts across Africa, it broke the business model. And it was because this man asked, why can't things be done? Why can't we have a card that can withdraw money at anywhere, any ATM in Africa? And for the first time, without even visa, Ecobank could issue a card that you could use on every ATM, irrespective of the currencies in the different countries. If you had an account with Ecobank, you could op you could use that card to withdraw your money anywhere. Later on, other banks uh, uh, follow. But it's just because Arnold was consistent and insistent in asking why. So, so many innovations uh, uh, came up. Okay. So, why is a powerful question that unlocks so many things, which enable not only Ecoban, but several other organizations and institutions and countries that have asked the question why, and so many other uh, situations have begun to transform and change. So asking questions is the beginning of change. Incidentally, most of us just like to tell. We like to tell people uh, because we are either parents, we are either teachers, we are other um, tutors, or we, we, are, we, are, we are training. And there's so many professions that pushes us to the mode of telling. You are a doctor, so you have to tell the patient what is wrong with the patient. As a teacher, you have to tell the student what it is. In fact, you are a consultant, so you have to tell the organization what is wrong with the organization. As a parent, you have to tell your child what is wrong. So over time, we move from the natural questioning tendency as a child into the mode of telling. But as you will see, there is much more power in asking questions than telling people what to do. All right? So the question is, why don't we ask questions? Or why don't we ask enough questions? Or why don't we ask the right questions? As I said, we're going to ask so many questions. Why don't we ask questions enough? John C. Marshall has said, there is no stupid question. In fact, when, when he would do presentations and teach, you would say, ask any questions. There's no stupid question. The only question that is that the only question that is stupid is the one that is not asked. So if you don't, if you have a question today, I want you to ask your questions. Because if you don't ask that question, you keep that question in your head, that becomes the stupid question. Because if you had asked, you probably have the answer. So why don't we ask questions? I have a few uh, suggestions why we don't ask uh, questions. Four points on that. Number one is for us in particular in Africa is our upbringing, our culture. We have a culture that says the child must be seen but must not be heard. So you were a child, the parents are sitting around, and you go and you ask a question. Mommy, why is this so? They will send you away. Don't you see adults are here? Go away. You should keep quiet. So children are not allowed to talk. In fact, even in school, where you go to learn, 
the child that is asking too many questions is reprimanded. Keep quiet. Listen to me. And that kind of culture, that kind of upbringing, weakens our desire to ask questions. And in fact, I dare say that we as Africans, we are where we are in our development because we are not asking the right questions to ourselves. Every time we have a problem, we are just asking the wrong questions. All of you know, in Africa, when anybody dies, the question you ask, most people ask, even if it's a 100-year-old person dies, is who killed him? That's the wrong question. And that's why we were not able to develop enough uh, medicines, enough science to address our problems because we are always looking for who killed him and we're causing so many social problems. Our culture does not allow us. When I was a child, if somebody stole something in the farm and, uh, and he's passing and, and I saw the person and I called my mother and said, that's the person who stole from them. They'll, they'll beat you and say, keep quiet. Children should not be talking about these things. That culture doesn't help us. In our organizations, the same way. This is organizational policy. Don't talk about it. And several organizations don't allow members of the team to ask questions. Bosses prefer to tell what you should do. They tell you how you should do it. They tell you the results to get. They tell you everything. So people become dependent on their bosses. That is one reason why we don't ask questions. The culture of the organization, of the nation, doesn't help. The other reason following from that is the fear of appearing ignorant or stupid. Because we don't encourage people to ask questions, when a question comes into your mind you, and you want to ask, you are not sure of what the reaction will be. And I told you I asked a lot of questions in class and several times I've asked a question and the whole class burst out laughing. And I don't understand why they are laughing at me when I ask a question. So over time, when I was, I was going to ask a question, I'm very conscious. I have to check again and check again because maybe I everybody understands it and I don't. So when, when I in my economics, math classes, when I was not very good at, when... The teacher, one, one lecturer used to have a way of, you know, checking and say, am I making sense? I would say, you're not making any sense at all. And then we say, why don't you understand? Now, because I didn't want to be radical, I would say the whole show. And the whole show means the lecturer has to start. And he would say, that, but I've been speaking for an hour. You can't say the whole of one hour. You don't understand. But I was afraid that when I asked the question, I will look ignorant because others understood and I didn't understand. So sometimes I will keep it. The fear of looking stupid. Ignorance also of the power of questions. And, and because a lot of us don't understand that questions carry the seed for growth or development. So we default to telling, especially we, those who call ourselves bosses and many leaders. We're telling people. We don't allow them to ask questions. There is also pride. They believe that you know everything, especially when you occupy a superior position. And so if you don't understand it, you don't want to ask. The, the pride of knowing it all. These are some of the reasons, and I'm sure there may be so many reasons. So I want to ask you to put into the comment box, why do you think people don't ask questions? And we'll come back to discuss them. What are some of the reasons, apart from this, that people don't ask questions? You, why is it that you don't ask so many questions? And let's discuss. Now, remember, as Richard Branson says, innovation happens when people are given the freedom to ask questions and the resources and power to look for the answers. It is absolutely key that we give people the freedom, we give our children the freedom to ask questions, to explore. In cultures where people are allowed to explore, 
That is where they have innovative approaches to doing things. When there are problems, asking questions will help us to come up with innovative answers to the problem. So innovation happens when people are given the freedom and they are given the resources and the power to look for the answers. That is when people become innovative. On the other side, when people are stifled of asking questions, of challenging the status quo, when people are not given the resources and the power to look for answers for themselves, when we spoon feed people, they are not able to innovate and they become dependent as we will, we will see. So another question, why are questions important? Why are we insisting that people should be asking questions? James Stevens says, we get wise by asking questions. And even if these are not answered, we get wise. For a well-packed question carries its answer on its back as a snail carries its shell. So questions make us wiser. How do questions make us wiser? A few points. And, and for those of you who may want to read more about this, please go to um, John C. Maxwell's book, Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. And the value of questions, the importance of questions is discussed fully in this book. And some of these points are coming from John's point. Number one, why is asking questions important? It is important because you only get answers to the questions you ask. If I ask you now, what is one plus one? I'm sure 99% of you will give me two. You are not going to give me three. You will give me two because that is the generally accepted answer. And recently I saw a video where a, 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 a teacher was correcting a child that that is not the answer. And the child says, no, it was. And then, you know, the, the child says, no, no, no. The, he's been intimidated and he's supposed to have his freedom to think. And the school had to fire the teacher because uh, the parents did not agree with the teacher that insisted that the answer to one plus one should be two when the child says it's a different answer. And those of you who are Christians, you will hear that the Bible will say a man will leave his mother and wife and the two shall be one. That's a different version of the answer. But generally speaking, if I ask you your name and you give somebody else's name, I will say you are wrong. You only get answers to the questions you ask. So if you ask the wrong questions, you get the wrong answers. And that is the problem we are having in our continent. Our leaders are asking wrong questions and they are giving us wrong solutions. And we keep running around in circles in our economy, in our political system, in our social development. We are always asking the wrong questions and we are getting the wrong answers and we are not able to move forward. So if you're a leader and you ask the wrong questions, you will get the wrong answers and your organization will suffer. Number two, why we should be asking questions? Questions unlock and opens doors that otherwise remain closed. Now, this point, my favorite uh, quote on this is Jesus's a statement in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. In fact, uh, when we were younger in the university, a friend had a story to tell about this particular verse. Um, it's, this my friend boarded a trotro, and those of you who are not Ghanaians, you know the trotro. He boarded a trotro, and as he boarded the trotro, uh, he, was, he was privileged to have the front seat. Then the mate brought a nice lady to sit by him, and as the structure started moving, and in our rough road, the structure was shaking. And any time the structure shaked, and the, my friend's body hit the lady's body, the, the lady would say, Matthew 7, 7. And 
constantly the, the the lady kept mentioning matthew 7 7 matthew 7 and this my friend i think had not read his bible for a very long time and he was intimidated to ask the lady why any time that he, he the, the bodies uh trouble each other she would say matthew 7 7 so she couldn't he couldn't ask the question and he once the, 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 the he got down he rushed into his room took his bible dusted it and started opening Matthew 7, 7. And when you open Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and it shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. This, my friend, was just, gee, I missed the opportunity. This is the message that I was being given, and I, I, I didn't get it. But the point is this. Questions unlock doors that are open. So even God wants us to ask. God wants us to seek for answers. God wants us to knock. That is the power in questioning, in asking that we have been given, even by God. Number three, questions are the most effective means of connecting with people. So if you want to connect with people, if you want to know where they are, if you want to feel the emotion, if you want to be you know, a social investigator, you want to connect with people, you ask them questions. And I like to ask questions. If you want to, with my teams, I will ask them, how are you feeling? How is your husband? How is your boyfriend? And that begins a kind of, you know, connection. The, 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 the gas are dropped. And then you begin to, 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 to have a connection, a relationship. And you can talk about so many things. But where you're not asking the questions, there is, there is a blockade and you're not able to relate better. Okay? Number four, questions cultivate humility. Now, asking questions shows that you are willing to learn. You are willing to seek for answers. You are willing to say that, I don't know. And that is one thing that most people are afraid to say. And last week, we had a full great lecture on leadership and vulnerability where we are taught that owning up and being vulnerable is actually powerful and questioning asking questions and saying you don't know and seeking for answers from your team members from your children from other colleagues from your bosses from your mentors is a sign of humility it shows you want to learn next point number five questions help us to engage others in conversation. Now, if you went for, a, for, 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 for a, a, a party and you met people that you didn't know from Adam in the party, the best way to start conversation is to ask questions. Uh, good evening. What is your name? Where did you come from? I like your dress. Who made your dress for you? I mean, oh, you're coming from Kumase. How is Kumase? Asking questions is the best way to begin conversation. So for those of you who feel that, well, you don't like talking, you are in a, in a crowd and you're feeling intimidated, just simple questions. What is your name? What school did you attend? Where do you work? Those simple questions begin to give opportunity for conversation. Norma says, questions allow us to build better ideas. You see, when you ask questions, and thought-provoking questions, they begin to come up, people begin to come up with different ideas. I told you about my boss, who would ask why questions. And very often, when he asks why, we now begin to think. And as we thought through the issue, we got better ideas, better ideas. So asking questions, thought-provoking questions is a good way of getting new ideas. So you have an idea, I have an idea, and I ask you questions about your idea, you ask me questions about my idea, and we ramble the ideas together, and we get better ideas. That is how new ideas are generated, asking questions. Otherwise, you take your idea, nobody asks questions about it, and then uh, we carry on. Questions give us different perspectives. By asking questions, we get different dimensions of issues. Number eight, questions 
challenge our mindsets and our assumptions. A lot of us have ideas about things. From our childbirth, we've been programmed to think in a certain way. Okay? And, and we don't question those things. So we become lazy in our thinking. And when you ask questions about your fixed ideas, you begin to unravel and get new ideas. You wake up from your laziness. You wake up from the assumptions and presumptions that you have about different things, about people. And then you begin to think. I mean, for example, there is, we, we all have a popular saying, we, we, we take for granted, they say, the early bird catches the web. Really? The early bird catches the web? Why? How? Which web? What, who says that the pe first person is always the most successful? So if you begin to ask questions about this popular statement, early bird catches the web, is there only one web? So the early bird catches it and it's finished? you will see the limitations of that statement and you begin to challenge that mindset. I mean, the first time I heard, um, I think it was John Maxwell who said that experience is not the, it's not the best teacher. And I sat back in my chair, I said, no, experience is the best teacher. And he says, no, experience is not the best teacher. We all have that assumption that experience is the best teacher. And when John explained that, no, People go through experiences and they, not, they don't learn anything from it. People repeat the same thing and they go in cycles. So it's not just the experience, but it is examined experience. That is the best teacher. Then my eyes started opening and my mindset about that philosophy began to change. And there are several philosophies which are holding us down, which are enslaving us, because we have assumed them to be true. Okay? So those are some reasons, some values, some powers in questions that I want to leave with you. And as I said, you can check with uh, John's book, Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. Um, a few more points here. Questions create collaborative relationship for better results. It's when you ask questions from your, your, your colleagues, they bring their ideas and therefore, collaboration begins. Number 10, questions create ownership. When you ask people questions, they create ownership. I, I told, talked to you about, I, I, I mentioned Arnold to you. When Arnold gives you some work to do, he will ask you, Sam, when can I have this back? And then he will say, oh, I can give it to you next week. He will ask, why? Um... Um, oh, okay, I can, and I'll give it to you on Wednesday. Why? So you begin to think through, why, why next week? Why Wednesday? Why not tomorrow? After that engagement, you will examine clearly, and then you say, oh, okay, after all, I can give it to you tomorrow. Now, when that question and the answers and the exchange that follows create an ownership, so I have made a commitment to give this tomorrow. Because I made that commitment, I now can own it. And therefore, I would operate on it. But if my boss just came and said, do this for me, I want it tomorrow, my initial reaction is, he doesn't know how much work I have on my desk, and he's asking for this tomorrow. What's wrong with him? Okay, I will see what I can do. Or I will leave other work. And then he cannot. Act. So there's no ownership. 11 questions create confidence and reduces dependence. Following from the 10, because I answer the questions, I take the ownership. I have confidence in myself. It reduces my dependence because I own and I take responsibility. So that is the power that you give to your people when you ask them questions. 12 questions lead to better listening. Leaders on the call, listening is a scarce commodity. And the key to practice listening is not telling. 
the key to practice listening is ask questions. And if you ask questions, it gives you opportunity to wait for the answer. And if you listen actively, you then improve your listening abilities. So, so those are some of the questions. Why should we ask the right questions? Let me share again quickly. Why should we ask the right questions? Okay? The ability to ask the right question is more than half the battle of finding the answer. Once you ask the right question, you are almost half true. And a few points to strengthen that position. Number one, as we've said before, you only get answers to the, to the questions you ask. So if you don't ask the right question, you won't get the right answers. It's as simple as that. Number two, focused questions stimulate creative thinking. So if you want creative thinking, you want to ask focused questions. For example, if you ask why, why is Africa poor? And we ask this question just like that. Why is Africa poor? And we give a thousand and one answers. And it doesn't empower us to do anything. We will give colonialism. We will give uh, this. We give corruption. We give this. We give so we give a thousand and one answers. So we get some information, all right. But if you ask the question, how do we apply the natural resources that God has given us to enrich our people? That is more focused. How do we use our cocoa resources to enrich ourselves? Even more focused. That will generate creative thinking. So asking the right question is very important. Number three, honest questions lead to solid, solid convictions. Now, if you ask yourself honest questions and you get the right answers, it gives you a conviction. So if you ask yourself the right question, honestly ask yourself, am I really capable of doing this? Is this within my, my strength zone? And you honestly look at yourself in the, in the mirror and you say, yes, I can do this. You get a conviction to do it. If your answer is no, then you ask yourself, honestly, what can I do? You get a conviction of your capabilities and your powers and your abilities. So honest questions give you the solid conviction. But if you don't ask honest questions and you pretend to do the things, you don't have the conviction and it's half-hearted. And that is what also happens to, to our team members. When we don't allow them to ask honest questions, they're not convinced about the vision. They're not convinced, uh, convinced about the purpose. They're not convinced about the direction we are taking them. Num point number four, correct questions help us find ourselves and our mission. Follow from the three. Okay. Once you ask yourself the correct question, what do I want, for example? What do I want in this life? A lot of the time we are asking what you don't want. We, we know what the thousand things we don't want. But the question, what do you want? What do I want to achieve in this life? What is the purpose of my life? When you ask correct questions about your life, it enables you to discover yourself and your purpose and your mission in life. All right. A few more thoughts on that. And then I'm going to bring to an end very soon, uh, hopefully in the next five minutes. So why ask the right question? If you don't ask profound questions, this is what happens. Let's compare not asking profound questions with asking profound questions. If you don't ask profound questions, you get shallow answers. But if you ask profound questions, you get profound answers. When you don't ask profound questions, the answers that come lack confidence because you're not sure, as we said, about conviction. But you get more confidence when you ask profound questions and the correct answers come up. Without profound questions, there's poor decision-making. Whereas once we ask profound questions, you get wise decision-making. Without profound questions, we live in a mental fog and we're confused. But with profound questions, with the right questions, 
we get crystal clear focus on life. Without profound questions, we work on low priorities. We waste a lot of time because we ask the wrong questions. But with the right questions, we get the right priorities and we work on the high priority things. Without the right questions, without profound questions, we process things immaturely. Whereas with the right questions, our mental processes, then the processes we put in place to address issues become mature. All right? So that's why we should ask the right questions. Now, I'm going to go through a few questions rather rapidly, share with you some of the questions that you should be asking yourself as a leader. Every leader must ask the 1,001 questions you should be asking yourself daily. But these are some of the questions. Rick Warren says, humility is not denying yourself strength. Denying your strength, rather. Humility is not denying your strength. Humility is being honest about your weaknesses. So as a leader, asking yourself questions, challenging your thoughts, asking the right question to yourself it's not actually a weakness. It's actually humility. And these are some of the questions you should be asking yourself quickly. Am I investing in myself? That is a growth question. And a lot of people, when you say they should buy a book, go to a course, they don't want to spend any money. We, we, we're on the growth journey. Great leaders are on the growth journey just for... 1,500. Some people don't want to pay that money. Number two, am I genuinely interested in others? Every leader must ask this question because this is the motivation. Why do you want to lead? If you're not interested in people, you can't lead them. Number three, am I grounded as a leader? This is a question of character. It's about your stability as a leader. So every leader must ask himself this question. Number four, Am I adding value to my team? It's a question of teamwork. And I've seen leaders and bosses who are not adding any value to their team. The members don't get anything, but they want to be respected. Your team will not respect you if you're not adding value to that team. Question number five, you should be asking yourself as a leader, am I staying in my strength zone? This is a question of effectiveness. So, if you don't know your strengths, if you don't know where you are, you, you have to focus on, you will not be effective. You'll be doing the wrong things. So ask yourself, as a leader, am I staying in my strength zone? Number six, am I taking care of today? This is a question of sources. Are you taking care of time? And John C. Maxwell has a whole book on today matters. Your financial resources, your family resources, your health. Are you taking care of your health, your body today? Are you taking care of the things that matter today? These are the things that are going to give you sources, your ideas. What are you doing today? What do you achieve today? At the end of today, what have I achieved? Every leader must ask that question. And the last but not the least, and there are many, many more you can add. You can add some of the questions you ask yourself in the chat and we'll discuss them. Am I investing time with the right people? This is a question on your return on your investment. As leaders, the best we can do is to spend time with the right people. The right people who would add value to us and the right people that we would add value to who will grow to take over from us. Succession is very, very important. All right. So we know questions we, we should ask ourselves. And I'm going to go through this very, very rapidly. Some questions that you should be asking your team members. Absolutely important. David Oxberger says, being head is so close to being loved that to the average person, they are almost indistinguishable. Being head is so close to being loved that to the average person, the two are almost indistinguishable. And as a husband, 
I understand this perfectly well because my wife has told me several times, you don't care, you don't love me. And it's simply because I'm not listening. She's talking and I'm not hearing, I'm not feeling her. And that is the challenge. So are you listening to your team? How do you listen to your team? As we said, ask them questions. And when you ask them questions, it's like you're, you're caring, you're loving. As I said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So these are some of the questions you want to ask your team members. How are you? Simple question. So many of us don't ask our members, how are you? And it's not just a usual, how are you? I'm fine and it's gone. Ask the how are you looking into their eyes, looking into them and feel it. Because sometimes they will say, I'm fine, but they're not fine. And as a leader, who cares? When you ask, how are you? You should be genuinely looking for how they truly are. Not the usual answer, the normal I'm fine answer. No. And I've seen some team members and I ask, how are you? And the way they answer, I say, you're not fine. Let's talk about it. What's happening in your, ha in your family, in your life, in your work? What's going on? How are you? Ask your team members. What are you working on? Very, very important to know. This gives focus to your team members. How can I serve you? How can I help you with what you're working on? Very, very important. That shows your team members you are willing to add value. What do you think? You have an idea. Bring it to your team members. What do you think about this? They'll give you more ideas. Five, what do I need to communicate? And sometimes you feel like you're communicating, you're telling, but you, you've not communicated. So if you ask your team, what do I need to communicate? They'll come back to you with some answers on some areas. Do we need, do we, did we exceed expectation? So you, you carry out a project with your team members, you should get feedback. Did we exceed expectation? Every team must aim to exceed expectation. That is where you keep your customers and your client. What did you learn? After every encounter and assignment with your team member, that question, what did you learn, is so key for their growth. Did we add value? That is the essence of leadership. Have I added value to you? Did we add value to our customers? How do we maximize this experience? When you have a good experience, ask your team members, how can we do this over and over again? Number 10, what do you know? Your team members know so much about things that you don't know. So asking that question, unlock the door, enables them to share with you. How do we make most of this opportunity? How are the numbers? Very, very important. How many customers do we have? How much profit are we making? How many calls have you made? This keeps us focused on results. You have to ask, what am I missing? And once again, go ahead, add some questions you ask your team members to get results. So I'm bringing this to an end. What have we learned? We've seen that questions are so important and they enable us to unlock several opportunities. We've seen why we don't ask questions, the fear of being looking ignorant. And in fact, by the way, it is better to look ignorant by asking the question than actually to be ignorant by not asking the question. All right, so asking and hearing people's opinion has a greater effect on them than telling them good job. And this is in relation to your team. Sam Walton said that asking and hearing people's opinion has a greater effect on people than telling them good job. So ask your people questions. So now, let me ask, what are your takeaways? Share in the box, in the comment section. What are you taking away today? What questions do you have? 
George Bernard Shaw says the greatest problem with communication is the illusion that it has been accomplished. I don't want to fall into that trap. I don't want to assume that I have communicated. So a few questions for you to put in the chat box. What have you learned about the power of questions today? What are you going to do differently from today? Please put your answers in the chat box and let's discuss. What habits have you decided to change going forward regarding questions? Number four, what questions do you need to ask yourself daily to get you focused? And number five, what are you going to teach others about questions? So, Sarah, that's my presentation. My last word is from Dan Sanders, and he says, it is the power of questions that embolden us and keep us as expectant children, all the while developing the power of human consciousness. It is the power of questions that keep us emboldened and keep us as, as expectant children all the time developing the power of human consciousness. So if you want to develop the power of human consciousness, it is question. So how can you contact us? Those are our contacts that you can reach us. You can reach us on our numbers, on our email, and you can connect with us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and let's continue the discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Let me have your answers to all those questions as we discuss. Go ahead also and ask your own questions. Thank you very much, Sarah. Over to you. Wow, wow, wow. This was excellent. I don't know about you, but I have more questions to ask. So before I do so, let me read a few of the comments. Sam, thank you, thank you so much for this uh, topic. It seems very simple, but it's very, very profound. Questions. So let's see what are in the comments. We don't have, uh, we have about half an hour to go. So let's see how we can race through all the questions and the comments that are coming through. Sam, get yourself some water and get ready for our comments and answers. So I had Ebenezer Ni Ama who says, examined experience is the best teacher. Wow, okay, that was a comment. But before that, I think, Sam, you did ask a question, why people don't ask questions. And Hadia did reply, saying the fear of being called too known. And Doris Arthur says there are more questions than answers. That's why she doesn't ask questions. So let me go down and see what Joe Kunto says. Joe Kunto says it is estimated that there are 3,294 questions in the Bible, out of which Jesus asked 307. All right, so he will tell us more about that. Joe Kunta, we're waiting for uh, what you want to communicate to us. And then Jerry says, great learning. And Cynthia says, thank you, some very insightful presentation. So her takeaway is that she will always ask questions when she is she has doubts. And Mami Bafo says, uh, asking questions can help me to think critically to be able to solve problems. Joe says, uh, who do men say I am? That's his question. And Isaac says, great, okay. I think he was referring to the presentations. And uh, Joyce Atta, very insightful. Uh, Benjamin Amwaku says, uh, thank you, great presentation. I'm poised to ask more questions going forward. Thank you for that, Benjamin. And then Joe Kuto says, Jesus' profound question was, who do you say I am? Focus question. Okay, thank you, Joe, for that. And Mina Ofori Apia, very insightful. Thank you. Isaac Yiku Kwashi says, awesome presentation so i have questions for our audience before sam you take up the questions that has come on board 
Let me see. I don't see much questions, but take away. So to our viewers, everyone, did some exceed expectations today? That is the question I want to um, you to answer for us. And also, did some add value to you today? I can see some of the takeaways have answered that. And what was some missing in his presentation? Let us know. And what did you learn? You have given us your takeaway. So two of the questions that we would like you to reply. Did Sam SP, uh, exceed expectation? Because that is the challenge he's through to us. These are some of the questions we have to ask. And did he add value to you today? Okay, Sam, I don't see any questions, but I believe they will be coming up. So whilst we get um, the questions up because people will be typing. I'll ask Kofi to show the adverts for the growth journey so that those who have missed the first cohort can sign up for the upcoming one. Kofi, could you show us the advert for the growth journey? Thank you. Hi, dear friend. My name is Samuel Ayim, and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey. So make a date with us and see you on the growth journey. Welcome back. Okay, so let's see the comments that are coming in. And uh, I see a picture can come who says, absolutely, yes, I guess. But uh, he goes on to say, Sam definitely added value to me. I am very grateful for his insightful knowledge. Thank you, the Christy. And Gerald says, thanks for this great presentation. In a way, questions are sometimes seen as negative and destructive in our environment. This presentation has brought out the positives in asking profound questions. Thank you, Gerald. And Gerald says, I joined a bit late, but, little, uh, but for the little I listened to, some definitely exceeded expectation as usual. Thank you, Gerald. And uh, Cynthia, sound performed above expectations. Wow, great. So Yao, Yao says, takeaway number one, asking the right question is a skill that must be learned. Takeaway number two, knowing how to ask the right question is more important than having the right answers for the simple reason that the quality of a question depends directly on the quality no, I guess he wants to say the quality of the answer depends directly on the quality of the question we ask. Thank you so much for that, Yao. And Akwesi Kankam says, my only criticism is that the points he shared with us are a bit too fast. I was trying to take notes, but I couldn't. Okay, Akwesi, the great news for you is that this has been recorded, and if you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and also Facebook, 
definitely you will be able to review the replay and do um, the taking of your notes. You'll be able to take the notes. So Sam, the, um, you were very too fast for them. That is the criticism. So that is what we are missing. We shouldn't go too fast. Okay, so Sam, come over and give more comments on this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. And uh, I I didn't pick any question, but I mean, the comments are great. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I agree with Yao that the quality of the answers you can get depends on the quality of the questions. So as leaders, we have to be very, very uh, clear about uh, when we are asking questions, because you can only get the answers you can get. And for, I can see you can uh, on our website, the presentation will be there. If you go to our website, you can download the PowerPoint uh, um, presentation also. So uh, if you missed anything on all our previous presentations, we have a video and the, and the PowerPoint. So um, you can get some notes there. So Sarah, in view of the fact that there are not many uh, mm -hmm. questions, I would not like to believe our point I want to encourage all of us to go back to our uh, child days to begin asking more questions. Ask questions about your life. Why are you where you are today? Ask yourself, what do I want in life? So many of us are missing on, on life because we are not asking, what do you want? Ask yourself the question, for example, if I look back 10 years from now, what could I have done differently? And from that lesson going forward, what am I going to do differently? Ask yourself, be specific. What exactly is your purpose in life? What impact do, you, do I want to make in this world? What contribution do I want to make to this world? And by the way, whilst you are on it and you are, you are beating yourself and a lot of us beat ourselves too hard, when you find yourself beating yourself too hard, ask yourself, if your friend was in that situation, what advice would you have given him? A lot of the time, we are more sympathetic to our friends when they are in difficult situations. But when we are in a difficult situation, we beat ourselves and we don't want to uh, be sympathetic to ourselves. So what advice would you have given? So these questions will help you to be able to refocus, to redirect your life. And I bet you, the power in asking questions is so strong that if you ask, you get the answers. If you seek, you will find. And if you knock, no matter how hard the situation is, the door will be open to you. So thank you very much, uh, everybody. And thank you, Sarah, uh, for, for facilitating the presentation and the questions and comments. Thank you so much. Okay, before we sign off, Sam, thank you so much. I would just like to read the last two comments. And uh, Colin says he really liked your practical application, especially the Matthew 7 7 Trotro illustrations. <laughs> so for, <laughs> so for our, our friends who are not Ghanaian, uh, the Trotro is a way of transportation in, in Ghana. So uh, that was what Sam was referring to. And then Yao says, not all the questions, Sam, that you ask can be answered spontaneously. For him or for me, they are so thought provoking that they require some time for finer grinding and more processing before coming up with an answer. Certainly, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And that's what we say. It's, it requires you to reflect. When you ask those thought-provoking questions, you don't just go and answer them instantaneously. They keep you to think. They keep you to reflect. 
they keep you to review, to research. Sometimes they will direct you to research and go back into history, into archives, read around, and get the answers. So that's the essence of questions. Yes. And also, right. Sam is a coach. I am also a coach. So if you need somebody to walk alongside you, just reach out to us and we'll be able to help you with having profound answers to your profound questions. Okay? So and Sarah, that is an absolutely important point because, you know, the, the most professions are telling professions. Yes. teaching, consulting, architect, they tell you what to do. One of the few professions where questions are important, I happen to have be part of the two, law, where we ask so many questions, and coaching. And coaching, when you go to your coach, they would ask you questions that will elicit answers from within you to help you. So if you're not able to ask your, yourself your own questions, Go to our, come to us, go to any coach, and they'll be able to, to help you. Sometimes I'm accused of asking too many questions, and I don't know if it is because of the law or the coaching, but I know that I used to ask questions before I became a lawyer, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everybody, yes. and have thank a good everyone. night. <laughs> yeah, have a good night, and see you next week for another session of the Leadership Platform. Thank you for being with us, and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, dear friend. My name is Samuel Ayim, and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks every week we'll have a session with you this program is limited to only 15 people we're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey so make a date with us and see you on the growth journey